Hi teachers, welcome back to another Schoology tutorial. Did you know you can make interactive activities for your early childhood students? First, let's look at a few examples that I created, then I'll go back and explain how to create these type of activities for your class. This activity focuses on phonics, fluency, writing, and CVC decoding. I'm going to preview the assessment as a student so that you can see how it will look on their end. As promised, I always try to have a freebie to go along with these tutorials so you don't have to start from scratch. Therefore, all of these visuals that you see will be included in the link that I give you later in this video. These activities are something I would assign after practicing short A sounds and focusing on the word family ad. Here the child would be able to practice their decoding and reading fluency by recording themselves reading these CVC words. This is a great way for you to track improvement in their reading. Later you can spiral the different sounds, assign short sentences or sight words. If your students are already reading, you can post a small passage and time their words per minute. The students can practice with parents and then when they're ready, they click on record. For the next example, students would have to highlight the words from the at family and they simply click on the words to highlight these sentences. Here they would build the word represented by the picture. The word is dad, so what they would do is select the bottom tabs in order to spell it out. Similar to that, they can also build a sentence and put words in order. These background visuals are not part of Schoology, so I had to upload it in order for it to look like that. I think for smaller children, it is important to have clear images and at the same time appealing to their eyes. Next, they can match the words with the visuals, and if they're using an iPad, it's even better because they can use their fingers to drag the cards in place, like this. This one here is one of my favorites. The students are reading these short sentences and then drawing what the sentence is about. This is a little bit of comprehension, so they learn that sentences have meaning. I made sure to add sentences that use only words that are part of the word family that they're working on and easy sight words. And what they would do is click here and they have the different color options. It's supposed to, it's meant more for highlighting, but it's more like a pencil that they can draw with. Here, students would have to drag the words that are missing from the sentence. So for example, my dad has a pad. And next would be multiple choice. Although multiple choice is common, I thought it would be helpful to add pictures. So they would just select the correct answer. And last, I added this writing activity. The students would write each of these short words two times on a piece of paper. And there are the instructions of how to upload it. Especially for young kids, I think it's important that they practice their penmanship often. And this visual shows paper that most students can get access to at home. Now I'm going to show you how to add these to your Schoology. You're going to start by opening the folder of visuals for the word family you want to use. There are seven total for the short A. I also made sure to add written instructions in case that helps you follow along better. If you don't teach a lower grade, you can still get ideas on how to use the different types of questions available in Schoology. You're going to start off by going to your Schoology course and then clicking on Add Materials. Scroll down to Add Assessment. Go ahead and type the title of your assessment and put the due date for when the assignment is due, make sure that under submissions, you're going to see disabled, make sure you put it on enable. That way the students can have access to it. And then go ahead and click create. Then you can go ahead and choose the setup, what kind of settings you want. There's a lot of different options, so make sure you look through each of these and see which ones work best for you and your class. And then click save. The first one I'm gonna show you is the one where they practice fluency and reading the words. 
I selected audio for that one. So you're going to click on audio and it's going to open the question setup choice for you. You can either type out the words, but if you want it to look visual, colorful, and big, you would use the image that I sent you and you're going to click on this image icon. You can either drag the picture or upload it from your folder. Once it uploads, you can choose the height, weight, height, width, and adjust the size, click OK. And another thing I like about this is that if your students are still young and you're, they're not able to read instructions, you can record your voice to give them instructions by clicking on record audio and then it'll prompt you to click again to record. In order to click to get to that icon, it's right here with the music note. The next question was the one where the students would have to highlight the words from the app family. What you would do is type out your sentences in this upper box and then in the bottom, you get to click on the correct answers. So you're selecting them so that way it marks these answers right. And then here you put the maximum selection, which is four, and you can choose the scoring type, whether you want the exact match, partial match, and if you wanna have penalty points taken off, um, you can go ahead and write author notes and put other possible responses. Remember, you can always preview the question to see what it would look like for students and show the answers. For the following question, which was build the word, you go ahead and you upload the image by clicking upload image and you select it from your folder or drag it again. And then you're gonna need to add response boxes so that the students can answer. So click on response box and then you'll see that appear. Go ahead and drag it where you want that to be. I made sure to have those lines be the exact same size that the boxes are. And you would do that for each letter. And then in the bottom, you would type the possible responses. Once you type those out, then you're going to have to do the answer key where it says correct answer setup. And you're going to answer it so that um, it can record the correct answer. And when the students answer it, it'll mark them right or wrong. Once again, you can do your scoring type. And if you wanna do partial match or exact match and save. For this next one, build the sentence, I'm also going to use the label image type of question. The last one was also label image. And same thing, you're gonna go ahead and add the response boxes and you're gonna have to type each response option, possible option, and drag them to put them in the order that you want so that when it grades it, it can mark it wrong or right and select your scoring type. For the matching question, you're gonna go ahead and select matching. The question setup is going to start by you adding the instructions or directions of what to do. And you're gonna have prompts and on the other side, possible answers. You can add as many as you want or have less than four if you feel you wanna start off easier. And then in order to add it, you're gonna click here and it's gonna give you that same toolbox. You can still, for Almost every single question, you can always add a recording of the instructions, and you can also add an image by clicking on that image icon. Once you add the pictures, you're gonna have to put the correct answer set up um, and then match them yourself. That way, whenever the students answer, it corrects it for them and gives them the correct answer if they mark it wrong. The following one is called read and draw. Something I forgot to mention is that the type of question this is, is actually called highlight image. And although they're not really highlighting, they're drawing the highlighting options here. Um, when they click on it, they can go ahead and use their mouse or their finger to draw. And it's called highlight, but I use it more for drawing. And the way that you go ahead and set that up is you put the instruction there if you want, but you don't really need to, and then upload the image. And that's all you need to do. For the fill in the blank question, you're gonna choose the option that says fill in the blank, drag and drop. There's other options there as well, but this one is called drag and drop. And you're gonna type the question on top and 
wherever you want the blank box to be, you have to put a response box. The way you put a response box is by typing an underscore when you're typing it and it'll automatically pop off. Then you type the possible responses here. I like to do more than just the two, just to make it a little bit more challenging, but not too hard. And then once you get the options here, you drag them to the correct answer setup so it grades it for you. Next, we have multiple choice, and you can either type a question here. Remember, you can also record um, your voice to give them instructions, and then you put an option. So it doesn't have to always be a visual, um, but for this, activity, I put these visuals and then you go ahead and you select the correct answer and click save. And finally, for the last one, which is called file upload, where they can go ahead and write on a piece of paper and upload their work. Um, you just upload this image or you can type the instructions and you click on that image icon. And then in the bottom, you can put a max number of files. That way they don't upload too many files and write notes for yourself. Once you submit and the students start working on it, it'll be able to show you the live progress and it'll let you know which tests need to be graded. Most of the answers will be graded on its own and will give you an automatic score. But for example, the one where you need to listen to them, you'll need to listen to it first or see their drawing, like in the read and draw, and then give them a rating. Um, sometimes when you click on the number, you think you have already graded it, but make sure to click the number and then press enter to make sure that it submits the grade. I hope these examples gave you some ideas of how to use the assessment tool in Schoology. Thank you for listening to this tutorial. The link for these CVC activities was either emailed to you by me or you will see them on the bottom of this video. Don't forget to subscribe and stay posted for the next teacher tutorial.